A new independent commission, they have just released a plan to close Rikers Island. Now, the proposal now has the support of Mayor de Blasio after he originally wasn't on board. The multi-billion dollar 10-year proposal, it would entail building a jail in each borough to spread out the inmate population. That in turn, it would save money as it would be cheaper and easier to get people to the courts. It would also make it more convenient for loved ones to then visit. And I recently spoke with a man who headed up the commission recommending the closure, and that is Jonathan Lippman. He was the chief judge of the state of New York, and here's what he had to say. Let's talk a little math on this first, and then we'll, we'll talk about the reasons behind it. Um, as argued right now, uh, it's inefficient, it doesn't work, um, and it's about 250 grand a year per inmate to not only house, but also pay all the attendant costs. Do I have the math right? Yes, exactly right. $247,000 a year per inmate. So the game plan would be as suggested that over the course of a decade, you'd reduce the prison population by as much as a half to 5,000 inmates. And then you'd try to move to a borough-based smaller prison system, and there'd be a price tag attached to it of about $10 billion. Um, explain first why that's a good idea and also how we get to the math. Well, I think that, the, first of all, we're not going to wait till after the 10 years to start phasing in the, uh, the system. Over the 10 years, we will be reducing the population, doing the sightings necessary to build uh, new jails, and it works on, on so many levels. Uh, we can get the population down to 5,000 through basic criminal justice reform, bail, speedy trial diversion, um, looking at certain uh, low-level misdemeanor crime, uh, looking at certain populations who shouldn't be on Rikers, uh, juveniles, uh, women, the mentally ill. And um, we, can, we can get it down, and if you do that, you can put the jails out in the different boroughs, and we are proposing one in each jail, downtown, close to the Civic Center, economy of scale, good transportation connected to the uh, courthouses. It will cost approximately $11 billion to do this whole project, but we project that there'll be $1.6 billion a year in savings to the, to the city through less inmates, more efficiency, uh, less staff, economy of scale, better transportation. So in the end, it saves the city money not cost the city money. The debt service to build the jails will be uh, far uh, uh, overcome by the amount of uh, uh, dollars that we save over time. Okay, beyond the financials of it, um, explain to the viewers why it's called Torture Island um, instead of Rikers Island for not just the inmates, but also for the families who go to see them. And also, while crime's down in the city, and the total population on the island is down overall. Why are stabbings uh, and other violent offenses up fourfold from where they used to be? Well, first of all, the place is, a, is what I call an accelerator of human misery. Whether people are there for three days, three weeks, three months, or three years, they come out worse than they come in. It's a dehumanizing place. It's a mass incarceration model that promotes uh, uh, violence and brutality. Uh, there's absolutely no reason in the world uh, why we should keep Rikers going. It doesn't serve the interest, as you say, not only of the inmates, but also of the families that take a whole day to go out to this place one way in, one way out, spend the whole day getting there, to spend a small amount of time with their loved ones. It's not healthy for corrections officers either. And uh, it's an unsafe uh, place that's a stain on the city of New York. And there is, uh, again, to my, mean, uh, my mind, uh, it, it is just uh, a, a miserable place. Torture Island is a kind name for what goes on there. And certainly the Monitor's report that just came out shows that incidents of violence are still there. And that behooves the city of New York, the corrections offices, all of us interested in the uh, policy of criminal justice and incarceration to uh, ensure that in the meantime, while we're going through this 10-year uh, phase-in, 
or phase out of Rikers and the phase in of the uh, locally based jails, that we do everything humanly possible to prevent violence and to make sure that the monitor's uh, report is com uh, complied with. And the uh, Commissioner Punt has indicated he's going to go right to it to make sure that's the case. And I think the corrections officers and the unions and everybody else is a part of this puzzle has to make sure that the violence stops now. There's no excuse to say, oh, we're going to get rid of Rikers. That's no excuse to say right now we allow the, the victimization of, uh, of human beings in this, in this miserable, horrible place. You know, Judge, uh, there are people at home right now saying, okay, I, I hear you, Your Honor, but if it means building one of these borough-based jails in my neighborhood, you better think again. Uh, they do the crime. They do the time. I feel for the CEOs, but I don't want this in my backyard, NIMBY. What do you say to those people? No, I don't think this is a NIMBY situation. Number one, we've been very careful of where we're going to put these jails. We're not saying that we're going to put 20, 25 jails all around the city in people's backyards. We're putting them, our recommendation, put them downtown, in the civic centers, near courthouses, um, again, economy of scale with transportation. In three of the five counties of New York City, um, the footprint is already there. We can do it on those footprints uh, in, the, in the counties of Manhattan, Brooklyn, and Queens, and in the other two counties, again, near the courthouse, near the civic center. So this is and shouldn't be an NIMBY situation. And I give you one example. The Brooklyn House of Detention uh, in, in downtown Brooklyn uh, is right in the middle of a residential area, and that area has thrived. Even with the jail uh, there, uh, there is absolutely no impact on the community, and the new jails that we're proposing building are state-of-the-art. We've gone to Denver and San Diego and Germany to look at how, what jails should look like. They're no longer these eyesores on the community. They are state-of-the-art design facilities that have on the ground floor commercial space. Uh, they're not these old-time, horribly designed uh, um, uh, jails that are, you know, from another century. These jails will look nothing like that, and there are not many of them. Share the burden, one in each county, and again, downtown, close to the courthouse. I don't believe this is a a NIMBY situation. I believe that we will have plenty of support in the city council, and our elected leaders have to show uh, um, political uh, will and political courage to say it the way it is. And the truth of the matter is that these jails will be an asset to the community, not an eyesore. They will not be in residential neighborhoods, uh, you know, all around the city. They'll be where they're already civic center buildings uh, uh, near our courthouses. And I think, again, it's been shown that the resident, residential areas can thrive around courthouses. And, uh, and I think this is in no way has to be a NIMBY situation. Well, we should find out as early as this Friday. Uh, Your Honor, as always, I really appreciate the time. Thank you so much. Oh, Richard, it's always a delight and a pleasure. Thank you so much. Coming up next, we're going to take a look at some local headlines. Please stay with us.